Fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, he's a fucking mother. Yeah, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, he's a total mother. Yeah, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, fucking fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucker, fuck the motherfucking Pope. Fuck the motherfucker and fuck you motherfucker if you think that motherfucker is sacred If you cover for another motherfucker who's a kitty fucker Fuck you, you're no better than the motherfucking rapist And if you don't like the swearing this motherfucker forced from me And reckon it shows moral or intellectual paucity Then fuck you motherfucker, this is language one employs But one is a little bit cross at motherfuckers fucking boys yep. And I don't give a fuck if calling the Pope a motherfucker means you unthinkingly brand me and unthinking apostate. This has now to do with other fucking godly motherfuckers. I'm not interested right now in theological debate. There are other fucking songs and there are other fucking ways. I'll be a religious apologist on other fucking days. But the fact remains, if you protect a single kitty fucker, then Pope or Prince or Plumber, you're a fucking motherfucker, yep. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what any other motherfucker believes about Jesus and his motherfucking mother. I've no problem with the spiritual beliefs of other fuckers, while those beliefs don't impact on the happiness of others. But if you build your church on claims of moral authority and with threats of hell impose it on others in society, then you, you motherfucker, can expect some fucking wrath. But it turns out you've been fucking us in our motherfucking asses. The motherfucker and fuck you motherfucker if you're still a motherfucking papist if he covered for a single motherfucker who's a kitty fucker fuck him he's as evil as the motherfucking rapist and if you look into your motherfucking heart and tell me true if this motherfucking stupid fucking song offended you with its filthy fucking language and its fucking disrespect If it made you feel angry, go ahead and write a letter But if you find this song more offensive than the possibility The Pope protected priests when they were getting fucking fiddly Then listen to me, motherfucker, this here is a fact You are just as morally misguided as that motherfucking power-hungry self-aggrandized bigot in the stupid fucking hat You got a spare 10 minutes? <laughs> Gonna do a poem. That's what you're here for, right? Poetry reading? Yeah. Huffpo. That's what Huffpo is gonna write. The biggest poetry reading in Washington, D.C. history occurred today, showing that the needs of poets should be taken into account in the next election. This is a rant, it's called Storm. Let's go. In a North London top floor flat, all white walls, white carpet, white cat, rice paper partitions, modern art and ambition, the hosts a physician, bright bloke, has his own practice. His girlfriend's an actress, an old maid of ours from home, and they're always great fun, so to dinner we've come. The fifth guest is an unknown. The hosts have just thrown us together for a favour because this girl's just arrived from Australia and she's moved to North London and she's a sister of someone or has some connection. As we make introductions, I'm struck by her beauty. She's irrefutably fair with dark eyes and dark hair. But as she sits, I admit I'm a little bit wary because I notice the tip of the wing of a fairy tattooed on that popular area just above the derriere. And when she says, I'm a Sagittarian, I confess a pigeonhole starts to form and is immediately filled with pigeon when she says her name is Storm. Conversation is initially bright and light-hearted, but it's not long before Storm gets started. You can't know anything. Knowledge is merely opinion. 
she opines over her Cabernet Sauvignon vis-a-vis -vis some unhippily empirical comment made by me. Not a good start, I think. We're only on pre-dinner drinks, and across the room, my wife widens her eyes, silently begs me, be nice. A matrimonial warning not worth ignoring, so I resist the urge to ask Storm whether knowledge is so loose weave of a morning when deciding whether to leave her apartment by the front door or the window on her second floor. The food is delicious and Storm, whilst avoiding all meat, happily sits and eats as the good doctor slightly pissedly holds court on some anachronistic aspect of medical history and when Storm suddenly insists, but the human body is a mystery. Science just falls in a hole when it tries to explain the nature of the soul. My hostess throws me a glance. She, like my wife, knows there's a chance I'll be off on one of my rare but fun rants, but I shan't. My lips are sealed. I just want to enjoy the meal. And although Storm is starting to get my goat, I have no intention of rocking the boat. Although it's becoming a bit of a wrestle, because like her meteorological namesake, Storm has no such concerns for our vessel. Pharmaceutical companies are the enemy. They promote drug dependency at the cost of the natural remedies that are all our bodies need. They are immoral and driven by greed. Why take drugs when herbs can solve it? Why use chemicals when homeopathic solvents can resolve it? I think it's time we all return to live with natural medical alternatives. And try as I like, a small crack appears in my diplomacy dyke. <laughs> by definition, I begin. Alternative medicine, I continue, has either not been proved to work or been proved not to work. Do you know what they call alternative medicine that has been proved to work? Medicine. medicine. <laughs> so you don't believe in any natural remedies. On the contrary, Storm, actually, before we came to tea, I took a remedy derived from the bark of a willow tree, a painkiller that's virtually side effect free. It's got a weird name, darling. What was it again? Masprin? A jasprin? Oh yeah, aspirin, which I paid about a buck for down at the local drugstore. The debate briefly abates as my hosts collect plates, but when they return with dessert, Storm pertly asserts, Shakespeare said it first, there are more things in heaven and earth than exist in your philosophy. Science is just how we're trained to look at reality. It doesn't explain love or spirituality. How does science explain psychics, auras, the afterlife, the power of prayer? I'm becoming aware that I'm staring. I'm like a rabbit suddenly trapped in the blinding headlights of vacuous crap. <laughs> Maybe it's the Hamlet she just misquaffed, or the sixth glass of wine I just quaffed, but my diplomacy dyke groans and the asshole held back by its stones can be held back no more. Look, Storm, sorry, I don't mean to bore you, but there's no such thing as an aura. Reading auras is like reading minds or tea leaves or star signs or meridian lines. These people aren't plying a skill. They're either lying or mentally ill. Same goes for people who claim they can hear God's demands and spiritual healers who think they got magic hands. By the way, why do we think it's okay for people to pretend to talk to the dead? Isn't that totally fucked in the head? Lying to some crying woman whose child has died and telling her you're in touch with the other side? I think that is fundamentally sick. Do we need to clarify here that there's no such thing as a psychic? What are we fucking to? Do we actually think that Horton heard a who? Do we still believe that Santa brings us gifts that Michael Jackson did not have facelifts? Are we still so stunned by circus tricks that we think the dead would want to talk to pricks like John Edward? Storm, to her credit, despite my derision, keeps firing off cliches with startling precision, like a sniper using bollocks for ammunition. You're so sure of your position, but you're just closed-minded. I think you'll find that your faith in science and tests is just as blind as the faith of any fundamentalist. Wow, that's a good point. Let me think for a bit. Oh wait, my mistake, that's absolute bullshit. <laughs> Science adjusts its views based on what's observed. Faith is the denial of observation so that belief can be preserved. If you show me that, say, <laughs> homeopathy works, then I will change my mind. I will spin on a fucking dime. I'll be as embarrassed as hell, yet I will run through the streets yelling, it's a miracle! Take physics and bin it! Water has memory! And whilst its memory of a long lost drop of onion juice seems infinite, it somehow forgets all the poo it's had in it. You show me that it works and how it works, and when I've recovered from the shock, I will take a compass and carve fancy that on the side of my cock.
everyone's just staring now, but I'm pretty pissed and I've dug this far down, so I figure in for a penny, in for a pound. Life is full of mystery, yeah, but there are answers out there and they won't be found by people sitting around looking serious and saying, isn't life mysterious? Let's sit here and hope. Let's call up the fucking Pope. Let's go watch Oprah interview Deepak Chopra. If you want to watch telly, you should watch Scooby-Doo. That show was so cool because every time there was a church with a ghoul or a ghost in a school, they looked beneath the mask. And what was inside? Ah, oh, the fucking janitor or the dude who ran the water slide. Because throughout history, every mystery ever solved has turned out to be not magic. Does the idea that there might be knowledge frighten you? Does the idea that one afternoon on Wikipedia might enlighten you frighten you? Does the notion that there might not be a supernatural so blow your hippie noodle that you'd rather just stand in the fog of your inability to Google? Isn't this enough? Just this world? Just, just this? beautiful, complex, wonderfully unfathomable natural world? How does it so fail to hold our attention that we have to diminish it with the invention of cheap man-made myths and monsters? If you sound to your Shakespeare, lend me your ear to gild refined gold, to paint the lily, to throw a perfume on the violet is just fucking silly or something like that. Or what about Satchmo? I'll see trees of green, red roses too. And fine if you wish to glorify Krishna and Vishnu in a post-colonial condescending bottled up and labelled kind of way, then whatever, that's okay. But here's what gives me a hard on. I am a tiny, insignificant, ignorant bit of carbon. I have one life and it is short and unimportant. But thanks to recent scientific advances, I get to live twice as long as my great, 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 great uncles and aunts. Twice as long to live this life of mine. Twice as long to love this wife of mine. Twice as many years of friends and wine, of sharing curries and, 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 and getting shitty at good looking hippies with fairies on their spines and butterflies on their titties. <laughs> And if perchance I have offended, think but this and all is mended. We'll as well be ten minutes back in time for all the chance you'll change your mind. You guys are doing a wonderful, wonderful, slightly soggy thing. Thank you so much. How about a hand for this sign language interpreter, S.B. Morgan?